to the lecture for section 14.1. This is MGF 1106, Liberal Arts Math, and my name is Jorge W. Young. So in chapter 14, we're going to be talking about statistics, and we're going to uh, start this conversation uh, talking about organizing and visualizing data. So the first thing is we're going to understand the difference between a sample and a population. Next thing is we're going to organize data in a frequency table. Then after that, we're going to go ahead and use different methods to represent data visually. And then the last thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about is stem and leaf uh, displays to compare data. So the first thing is, what, what is statistics? And statistics uh, essentially is an area of mathematics in which uh, data is gathered, at, organized, analyzed, and evaluated. And then predictions can be made uh, from uh, this data that's collected. Now we can collect numerical data, or we can also collect qualitative data. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is the set of all items, and this is the population. So uh, let's say I wanted to, to say something about our class, right, the section that we have. So the class would be the population. If I randomly select five students from that class to, to sample, to ask the questions, if you will, and so that would be the sample of the population. And the sample is just a subset of the population. In real life, it's, it's nearly impossible to get the entire population, and that's why samples are used uh, probably 99.9% .9 of the time. If the entire population is used, that's a census. The next thing is that we can uh, we can have sample bias. And sample bias essentially means that uh, the something happened in the, either in the collection of the sample, the questions that caused the sample to not reflect the population from which a sample was gathered in an accurate manner. And uh, bias can occur in different ways. We it, the way that we choose the participants, and this is selection bias or the type of questions or the way that we ask the questions can also affect how reliable uh, a sample is. And this is what we call leading question bias. Now, let's talk about frequency tables. Now, we refer to collection of numerical data, numerical information as data. Uh, and then a set of data listed with the frequencies is called the frequency distribution. Now, we show the percent of the time that each item occurs in the frequency distribution using a relative frequency distribution table. And I'm gonna show you how to do that um, now, now, uh, when we do the table, we have different columns. We have a column for the, for the classes or the groups, if you will. Then we have the classes for the frequency or the tally, how many times each one occurs. And then, of course, the relative frequency is the, the times that, that a, a class occurs divided by the total. So here's an example. 25 viewers evaluated the latest episode of CS, CSI. So the possibilities were excellent, above average, average, below average, or poor. Now after the show, the 25 evaluations were as follows. So here we have the 25 evaluations. So we're gonna go ahead and construct a frequency table and then a relative frequency table uh, that will list these evaluations. So here we have the tape, the data organized in the table. Now, if it's not organized in the table, it's what we call raw data. And it's really difficult to uh, um, get any information from raw data. So here we have the classes, which is E, A, V, B, and P. And then how many times each one occurs, and that's called the frequency. And if you notice, the total is 25. So when we add up the frequency of our, in our table, it has to add up to the total number uh, that we have originally or the sample size. The next thing is we're going to talk about the relative frequency. So here the relative frequency, what we do is we take the frequency of each class and we divide it by the total. So 4 divided by 25 is 0.16. 7 divided by 25 is 0.28, and so on and so on. And that column has to add up to 1. So we have another example. Here we have 40 healthcare workers that take an AIDS awareness test and earn the following scores. So we're going to go ahead and construct a frequency table and then a relative frequency table for this data. Um, now, you have to be careful because um, in class I'm going to show you how it is that we get these classes. So we got 50 to 54, 55 to 59, and so on. Uh, and this is not this doesn't occur in a random way. So there's there's a, a very specific procedure in how you get your classes. But the one thing I want you to notice for this class for these classes is that they're consistent. So 50 to 54 is the same as 55 to 59. So the difference between the upper uh, limit and the lower limit is the same for each class. So you have to be consistent. And then you have the frequency for each class, and of course it has adds to add up to 40 because that's what we had at the beginning. So the next thing is the relative frequency. So again, you have your classes, you have your frequency, you have your total, so you take the frequency divided by the total, and then you get the relative frequency for each class. Then if, if you add up the third column, you should get one. 
Now, how can we represent data visually? The first thing is a bar graph, and you, you should be familiar with a bar graph. So a bar graph uh, essentially is, is just you have classes on the horizontal axis and frequencies on the vertical axis, and the frequencies are represented by a bar. Uh, if we're graphing a relative frequency, then the height of the bars corresponds to the size of the relative frequency. So we're going, here we have the table from the previous example, and we're going to go ahead and draw a bar graph uh, for, this, uh, for this table right here. So here's the bar graph and several things that you have to notice. The frequency, and it's consistent, it goes from 0 to A and it goes by 1. We have uh, that in the vertical axis, we have the classes on the horizontal axis, and all of the bars are the same width. So, uh, and that just goes back to uh, just being consistent. Now, the next thing is we're going to go ahead and do a bar graph of the relative frequency. So it's, it's really the same um, bar graph except that the, the vertical axis now is percent. But again, even though it goes from 0 to 35 percent, it's consistent. It, the, the scale goes up by 5. And, and then again, the bars are the same width. Now, when we collect data, uh, we can either collect discrete data or continuous data. Now, discrete data, an example would be the number of children in the family or the number of siblings. So you can have zero siblings, you can have 10 siblings, but you, can have, you cannot have 2.5 siblings. Now, continuous data would be the weight of someone. So um, that's continuous because if I were to take a, a sample of people, let's say here at Pasco and Anderson State College, and I would weigh them, I would, I would get a continuous uh, spectrum of weights all the way from the lightest person to the heaviest person uh, and someone can be uh, you know 115.87 pounds or 125.237 pounds and that's continuous. Now when we use this kind of data we use what we call a histogram. Now the big difference between a histogram and a bar graph is that the bars of a histogram are continuous so there are no gaps. So here's an example. Clinic has the following data regarding the weight loss by its clients over the past six months. So we're going to go ahead and draw a histogram. So here we have our classes, which is the pounds lost. So 0 to 10, 10 to 20, and so on and so on. And the frequency for each one, we have a total of 65. So here's our frequency table. Now the next one is our relative frequency. And again, relative frequency is the frequency divided by the total. The, the sum of the relative frequency should be 1. The sum of the frequencies should add up to your sample size. So here's the histogram, and if you notice that the bars are continuous, so they're all touching each other. Again, uh, the, the vertical um, axis is consistent, goes from 0 to 40, goes up by 5, and in the horizontal axis, here's, that's where we have our classes. So let's look at, at getting information from, from a bar graph. So this is the number of Atlantic hurricanes over a period of years, and we're going to answer the following questions. So the first thing is, what was the smallest uh, number of hurricanes in a year during this period? And what was the largest? So the solution is that the smallest number of hurricanes in a year during this time was 4, and the largest was 19. Now, what number of hurricanes per year occurred the most frequently? Again, we look at this table uh, of the bar graph. We look at the tallest bar, which appears to be the number 11. Therefore, 11 hurricanes occurred in 10 different years. Now, how many years were the hurricanes counted? So, in order to get this, what we do is we add the heights of all the bars, and we get 58 years. Now, in what percentage of the years were there more than 10 hurricanes? Again, we count the number of years in which there were uh, more than 10 hurricanes, and we add the heights of the bars. So, here are the heights, so 10, 5, 5, 3, 1, 1, which adds up to 25. So, there are 58 years of data. So, uh, 25 divided by um, 58 gives us uh, 0 0.431, which is 43.1%. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is stem and leaf. So the following the number of home runs hit by home run champions in the National League for the years of 75 to 89 and then 93 to 2007. We're going to compare these using a stem and leaf display. So the first thing is that uh, when we construct a stem and leaf, we have a stem and a leaf. So for example, number 38 has a stem of 3 and a leaf of 8. So 30, the 3 and the 8 is 38, the 3 and the 1 is 31, the 4 and the 0 is 40, uh, and then on the, the 1 from 93 to 2007, the 6 and the 5 is 65, the 7 and the 0 is 70. And the way we, we can compare t these two data sets is using what we call a back-to-back -back stem and leaf display. 
And here, in comparison, it's clear that the home run champions uh, from 93 to 2007 hit more home runs than the champions from 75 to 89. And that's the end of section 14.1. Thank you.